Hey, 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 welcome back to the Yulia Tudor Show. And today I want to talk about something that I think we all go through, right? Why? Why is it so freaking hard to change? Well, um, I've been reading the Breaking the Habits of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza, and I'm absolutely fascinated with what I discovered. Um, and I'm actually going to read you some quotes that I, um, I found really, really inspiring. But get this, guys. The reason why it is so hard to change is because we have become physically addicted to our thoughts, right? So initially, we have certain thoughts. So there's a, an external situation that happens in our environment. The meaning that we create, the, the, the meaning we attach to the situation creates a thought, right? And then this thought um, sends signals to your hypothalamus, which is basically responsible for releasing hormones in your body. And these hormones in your body start to create physical changes, right? So it might release cortisol from your adrenal glands, and then you basically get in this anxious state, in this anger state, right? In this high um, tension, right? So it literally conditions your body to, to, to stay in a state of, of anxiety or of depression because you've trained your body to react to your thoughts. And your body literally literally becomes addicted to the way that you think and you don't even need to think like that anymore an external environment doesn't even need to elicit a thought or an emotion because your body is literally just conditioned to to feeling that state of anger depression guilt or anxiety whatever the dominant feeling is so oh my god it is just so freaking mind-blowing i just want to read you something okay so take a, this is talking about more like on a on a biological level, what happens to your body. So um, each, each cell divides at the end of its life and it makes a daughter cell. The receptor sites outside of the new cell will require a higher threshold of guilt, anger, depression to turn them on, right? So now the body demands a stronger emotional rush of feeling bad in order to feel alive. So you literally become addicted to the feeling by your own doing, right? So it's basically when, when you're trying to change how you emotionally feel, you're you're actually going through a withdrawal, right? Because you've you're no longer feeding the body the thoughts that match the feeling that you've conditioned your body to feel, right? So let's hear, uh, read some of the comments. Ray says that is an upside down Christmas tree on the ceiling. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so. Zach here says thoughts become reality. Uh, Richard says that is a good book and I'm still reading it. Fia says yes. Okay, so take a look at this. I thought this was a really cool um, analogy or rather a dialogue of what's happening between your brain and your physical body when you're trying to change, right? Like let's say you always feel um, anxious of a situation, right? And then your friend comes and he tells you, you know, Yulia, you know, this person isn't in your life anymore. You don't need to feel anxious. Like this person doesn't have to control your feelings anymore, right? But when you get conditioned to feeling anxiety all the time, then it's really hard to change. And then you make a constant decision, a, a conscious decision to not feel like that anymore. To you really want to change. You really want to feel happy and blissful and in a positive state of mind. But then your body goes into conflict. It says, hold on a second, that's not what you trained me to do. So let me just read you a little dialogue of what happens between you, your mind, and your physical body. So, okay, you know, your body says this, what are you doing up there? You know, you insisted on being guilty and we loyally followed your commands for years. We subconsciously memorized a program of guilt from your repetitive thoughts and feelings. We changed our receptor sites to reflect your mind modified our chemistry so that you could automatically feel guilty. We have maintained your internal chemical order independent of any external circumstances in your life. We are so used to the same chemical order that your new state of being feels uncomfortable, unfamiliar. 
We want the familiar, the predictable, and what feels natural. All of a sudden, you're going to change? No, we can't have that, right? So here's what happens is when you're trying to, to change, you're going to hear you know, justifications in your mind that this doesn't feel good. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel anxious. It's their fault. They made you this way. Go ahead and indulge in that anxious feeling or in that depression or guilt. It's okay. It's not your fault, right? So you're then literally, it's as if your body has a mind of its own. Your body has become the mind now. Your body now tells your mind what to think. You have lost control of, of your thought processes because you have conditioned your body to think in such a way, right? So you start justifying feeling bad because it's more comfortable and it's easier to, to go back to the old familiar ways of thinking, right? So you start to really believe what your body is telling you, right? It's like your new gut feeling, but that gut feeling isn't actually the truth. It's not actually the the reality, you know, the external stimuli might not even be there to create those thoughts in your mind. It's like, you know, when, when you're driving you and you're thinking about something that happened at work or a fight with a spouse or with a friend, right? And, and you're reliving that experience in your mind. And even though that person isn't in front of you to upset you anymore, you're still reliving it. And, and the crazy part is that your body just um, goes through the same bodily reactions, the same chemistry, the same hormones as if the situation was happening right now. So we are literally living in the past and we're so conditioned, our body starts taking control of our feelings and thoughts. And that is why it's so freaking hard to change. But, and, but this change can happen. So I do have some good news is that, you know, you just have to be aware right? Make a conscious decision that, you know, the way that I'm feeling and is not good for me. It's not conductive to my future, to my success, to my desires, and I need to change and be aware that it is going to be uncomfortable. I mean, you know, sometimes we may just think in a negative way, in a pessimistic way automatically now because we've conditioned our mind to think that way for so long because we're always reliving the past, right? So sometimes you might just catch yourself stirring off in a direction just automatically. Why? It's because the neurons that wire together fire together, right? So basically you, you've created those neural connection, connections in your brain. You've walked down that path so many times that you're, when, when, the, when the neuron, or sorry, when the neurotransmitters are looking for the fastest way, because that's what our brain does, it always looks for the fastest way to connect the dots, to come up with a thought or conclusion, um, to interpret the environment. So it's always going to take the fastest route. So if you've always been thinking in an anxious way, in a pessimistic way, in a way that creates guilt, and in all those pathological ways, your, your neurotransmitters are always going to take that shortcut in your brain. And the crazy part is that your body now conditions your brain and your mind to take those paths. So you really have to, you know, stop and realize what you're doing, what you're thinking. And to me, that's why I think meditation is so important because it brings your awareness back to your body. It brings your mind an awareness with your body and, and puts you back into the present moment and realize that, you know, those feelings that you're feeling, those you know, those emotions, um, you know, those, those are just the reflections of the past. They don't actually represent the current reality that you're in. So I find meditation a really good way to break that cycle and also affirmations. You know, like a lot of times I talk about brainwashing yourself. You literally have to reprogram your, your brain. It's kind of like, you know, when you're looking at your computer and things are going wrong with your computer, right? And like things are popping up and there's like certain viruses and you're yelling at it and you're telling it like, no, I don't want this to happen, right? But nothing's going to change. The only time it's going to change is when you literally go into the computer and change the settings. So we literally have to unlearn the patterns that we've been thinking. But the good news is, is just how, just how you developed this way of thinking, this negative way of thinking. I mean, you were the one to plant that seed in the first place and you were the one who fed, who 
you know, poured water, gave light to that seed to come to fruition, right? So the same thing can happen with positive thoughts. It's just going to, it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to take some practice. It's going to take some awareness, right? But it's worth it, right? Because it is such a, it's totally going to improve the quality of your life. And let's see what else I can find in here because this is just amazing. But basically the main message is that when the mind and the body are in opposition to itself, change is very difficult to happen. So sometimes, you know, we might have to do things in our physical body to change our mind. So you might have to go do some exercise. You might have to go for, for a walk. You might have to surround yourself with a different environment to change those thoughts. So I just think this this book is is amazing. It's like absolutely mind blowing. The fact that your body like it, it literally creates a memory. That's what happens. Like like for example, you know when you try to remember your pin for your for your card or your debit card, and maybe you've forgotten it. Like conceptually, you've forgotten it, but your 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 muscles in your hands remember it automatically it's like as soon as you start typing in your pin your body just knows what to do we have literally created memory programs in our body to to uh, act in a certain way to behave in a certain way so you literally have to reprogram yourself right you have to make it um you have to make it a new habit right and how do you create a new habit is through practice through doing affirmations, through doing meditation, through doing exercise, right? You just, you have to be committed to becoming the best version of yourself. You have to be committed that, you know, despite the discomfort, despite, you know, it's, it's so weird. Like we've literally become addicted to our suffering because that feels familiar. That feels normal, but normal isn't actually good for you, right? So let's just take a, a moment to read the moment. So Richard says, this is muscle memory. Ray says, this simply said, whatever we focus on expands. Be careful what we focus on, literally. And it's not like, I'm just tapping in to the biological explanation of why it's so hard to change. But I mean, there's also a quantum level to it as well, because what we focus on, we keep attracting. Our, our body is a temple. It is basically the, the transportation of, of energy. And if we're creating this internal environment in ourselves, we're changing the way we think. We're changing the way we believe and we change the way we act and the way that we act literally impacts our environment. So it's, you know, if you're going through a struggle and you really want to become a better version of yourself and it's, it's hard and I know it's hard to change, but it is possible because the way that you are right now, you created that. And this is why I'm so freaking fascinated with the power of the mind. And I really, you know, in my university studies, I, I studied on how people come out of a traumatic situation resilient and how some people come out of a traumatic situation and spiral downwards. And it's literally, you have the power of creating meaning to your situation, creating meaning to your life. So when something happens to you that is, you know, you're in a, in a time of adversity, a time of struggle and, ch and challenges, I encourage you to create a positive meaning and I know that's not going to be easy to do at first because you've been so you've conditioned yourself to create a negative uh, meaning that confirms you to be in, in a state of victimhood and not only that like my god we it's also the cultural norms right we have been programmed to to stay in victimhood to give up our power to blame the government to blame our parents to blame our genetics Speaking of genetics, by the way, um, you know, there's an emerging field of studies called epigenetics, which is basically how the environment can create changes in the gene and the DNA without, um, you know, being an internal state of being. They're, the environment can actually create changes in our internal body, right? So there's so many factors that play in, in the way that we operate, you know, it's the meaning that we create to our situations. Um, it's our body that becomes addicted to certain feelings that become familiar. Why do we become addicted? Because it wants to operate in a way that is consistent, right? Um, for example, when you are feeling 
in a way that is inconsistent with how you're thinking. You're experiencing this thing called cognitive dissonance um, and you're, you're going to experience uh, some tension. It's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel not right when you're trying to change, right? Um, so there's just be aware of these factors um, and it, just be aware that it's going to be uncomfortable, but that is truly where the biggest growth happens. When you step out of your comfort zone, you're going to feel some pain, but be addicted to the change. Be inspired by the growth, right? It's like when you're going to the gym and the most growth happens in your last rep, right? When the muscles are really tearing apart. If you want a real change, you're going to have to alarm your body. You're gonna to have to declare, this is the person I'm going to be. My body is not in control of my mind. My mind is in control of my body. My mind is in control of my life. My mind is in control of my environment. And this is what I want. And you start paying attention to what you want and you start adding momentum to what you want. And if your mind isn't going to go there, change your body, go for a run, do some exercise, do some meditations, affirmations, do whatever it takes. Be absolutely committed to becoming the best version of yourself that you could possibly be, right? So I just want to make you aware that if you're going through a change, if you're trying to overcome adversity, it's going to be tough, okay? And just accept that and be committed because nothing that is really worth comes easily, right? But once you get in the habit of changing your mind and looking for abundance and creating a positive meaning, you literally become unconsciously uh, conditioned to thinking this way. So just how you are con unconsciously thinking negative now, you can reprogram yourself. You can change your life, but it all starts up here and it all starts right here. If something doesn't feel right, if you're not happy with the way things are going, invest in yourself, get books, right? To educate on what's happening in your body, surround yourself by a support system, change your environment, do whatever it takes, be committed to your growth because it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And you have that power because you had the power to create the way that you are right now. You are the creator of your own life. So, oh my gosh, like this book is phenomenal. It's literally changing my life. And I hope that I've inspired you and I've encouraged you to take control of your life because you're the one who created it in the first place. So, hey, if this has inspired you, comment down below, share this, um, and let's, let's link arms and let's grow together. Let's be committed to becoming the best versions that we can possibly be. So thanks so much for tuning in here live with Julia, and we'll see you on the next episode.